Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janal Norville. This edition Stop Stories. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chasney calls the global community to action, warning that time has run out for small island developing states. St. Lucia to benefit from a more than 30 million US dollar health project supported by the World Bank. Students in Education District 1 rewarded for dedication to excellence. All that plus the latest in youth development and sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Chairman of CARICOM, the Honorable Alan Chasney, has challenged the international community to act on its expressed commitment to combating climate change. During his address to the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly, Honorable Chasney asserted that small states like St. Lucia can ill afford the staggered pace and bureaucracy that hinders financing for resilience building. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, did not mince words when he addressed the UN General Assembly. The Prime Minister highlighting the devastation faced by countries like Barbuda, Dominica, and most recently the Bahamas indicated that world leaders must act with more urgency as it is critical to save lives. To date, despite the overwhelming evidence, the tragic loss of lives, and the destruction of people's dignity, we unfortunately have failed. We're failing as world leaders to act with the urgency and instead allowing too often the denials of a few to paper over the real existential threat to the lives and livelihoods of so many. Where is the action to deploy with immediate effect the resilient solutions and the commitment to wrestle to the ground the fact that a heating planet is to blame and the fact that we are the ones heating it? For the few who stand with us and have provided tangible assistance as we fight for our survival, we are grateful for the support thus far. But I dare say that given the magnitude of the problem, we only have begun to scratch the surface. Honorable Chastney asserted that the inability and at times the unwillingness of international entities to change the status quo as it relates to graduating countries out of programs and creating new financing vehicles can no longer be tolerated. He added that without global financial institutions heeding the calls of small island developing states, they are left to find solutions on their own and lean on new friends in their time of need. Highlighting the advancement of the Caribbean, the Prime Minister explained that the region cannot do it alone. We SIDS continue to have to battle with insurmountable challenges, many as a result of rules and systems that do not create the mechanisms and the requisite urgency to address our unique challenges. Some of these rules impose arbitrary restrictions on states in the absence of credible evidence to support claims of wrongdoing. Our islands are being blacklisted, a demeaning and unfair practice that results in some instances to affect irreversible damage to our reputations. So for countries like St. Lucia, who has the ambition of self-sufficiency and aid-free, cannot exercise the will to participate in financial services, an area in which we have a comparative advantage. The Prime Minister indicated that St. Lucia has been working feverishly to take control of its own destiny. One such way is our new partnership with the World Economic Forum to be the first country to implement the country financing roadmap. The CFR is a platform to support countries in making a transformative shift from, a transformative shift from funding to financing. It will harness the collective intelligence from the WEF's expansive networks and promote consensus on the main challenges that limit capital flows to St. Lucia. It will also leverage coordinated action to move from a holistic diagnostic to a country-specific tangible action plan. We are grateful for, those, for this opportunity to be the test case for this initiative and look forward to its success and once successful to be replicated across other states. The Prime Minister delivered his address on Friday, 27 September 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The World Bank's Board of Executive Directors has approved a U.S. $30.6 million regional health project to improve regional coordination and resilience for public health emergencies and extreme weather events in four member states of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. 
The OECS Regional Health Project will help improve climate resilience of select health facilities in Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The project will also strengthen the capacity of health systems in the OECS region to ensure continuity of services following an extreme weather event, boost national and regional disease surveillance systems to detect and respond to infectious diseases more rapidly. This U.S. $30.6 million project is a combination of interest-free credits and grants financed through the International Development Association Credit, the concessional financing arm of the World Bank. In previous years, the World Bank has provided a total of U.S. $157 million in financing to support health initiatives across the Caribbean. Meantime, the Department of Economic Development, Transport and Civil Aviation is hosting a week-long workshop in collaboration with the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, in refining a Green Climate Fund project for St. Lucia. Nisha Charles reports. The Green Climate Fund was established to support the efforts of developing countries to respond to the challenges of climate change. To gain access to that fund, however, a strict climate science-based methodology must be adopted. With the help of the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, Selnusha is gearing up to build capacity to develop projects which meet the criteria to access funds for the Green Climate Fund. A workshop on enhancing the climate science basis of GFC-funded activities is taking place this week in St. Lucia. Financial's Descat is the permanent representative of the National Designated Authority to the Green Climate Fund. The frequency of high-impact hydrometeorological events in our region seem to have increased in recent times, and we do not know who the next target will be. There is now compelling evidence that climate change has reached our, our doorstep, and our response to that phenomenon may very well determine our future. So getting through with this workshop and pursuing the next steps is certainly the right way to go. The Paris Agreement of 2016 calls on the best available science to underpin climate action. The WMO supports that endeavor and is committed to assisting member countries to draw on the best available science to confront the challenges of climate change. About a year ago, uh, we entered into a partnership with the Green Climate Fund that is focused on ensuring that projects, plans, proposals that are presented to the fund have a strong climate science basis and that the actions that are proposed in those plans and projects are a response to the past, present, and future conditions of the climate as, as best as uh, science can tell us. And uh, over that year, we have worked very hard with uh, the input from dozens of experts to prepare a methodology, which I'll describe later on, uh, that we hope will underpin our efforts um, during this week. The workshop is being hosted by the Ministry of Economic Development, Transport and Civil Aviation. The Minister, Honorable Guy Joseph, says the impacts of climate change are far-reaching. It is evident that climate change not only threatens to erode development achieved thus far, but to hamper the future development of these countries. And we have said it several times. If we build a bridge higher to accommodate greater flow of water, does not mean that this bridge will carry more cars than it used to before. But yet still, these are expenses that the country must incur in order to respond to the threat of what the climate is doing today. The workshop will run from September 30 to October 4, 2019. In keeping with changes in the international oil prices and the government's application of the modified market pass through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline, diesel, kerosene, LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The price changes take effect from Monday, September 30, 2019.
Gasoline decreased from $13.57 to $13.21 per gallon. Diesel decreased from $13.07 to $12.81 per gallon. And kerosene decreased from $8.76 to $8.12 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder increased marginally from $32.07 to $32.28. The 22-pound cylinder increased by $0.24 cents to $35.79. The 100-pound cylinder increased from $204.16 to $205.22. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, October 21, 2019. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop. As a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome everyone to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. School sports events now gaining some momentum during the start of the first term of the new school year. Schools basketball fixtures set for Tuesday, October 1st. Sufre Comprehensive set to take on current in a Group C engagement, while in Group A, Castries Comprehensive comes up against Arthur Lewis Community College. Matches in school football on Wednesday. Under 15, Group D, Archipo takes on Patricia James Secondary at the SAB, and in Big 8 competition, Archipo will face Boys Training Center also at the SAB. Under 15, Group B, Beanfield tackles Bocage at the Philip Marsley ground, while in Big 8, Miku takes on Soufre also at Philip Marsley. Under 15, Stanley John Odlam plays Leon Hess at Marsha, and in Big 8 action at the same venue, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College will take on Granivere Secondary. In netball action, next game's on Thursday. Corinth takes on Leon Hess at the Viji Malibaba Sports Complex. Miku takes on Chozelle at Miku, while St. Joseph's Convent plays Castries Comprehensive at the Viji Multipurpose Sports Complex. Channel swimmer Cameron Bellamy, who recently completed a bold, brave swim from Barbados to St. Lucia, described how he ended up taking on that challenge, as he was originally planning to swim from Cuba to Florida. You know, obviously doing so much swimming in Barbados, St. Lucia is so close, and everybody in Barbados says like, hey Cam, have you been to St. Lucia before? And I'm like, no, and they're like, you should go, because like, you know, Barbados is beautiful, but like St. Lucia is beautiful for much different reasons, you know, it's like, it's very different geographically um, and just a great place and so I've always been thinking about this channel swim <clears throat> and so when the Cuba swim fell through I was like I got a hold of my buddy um, my best buddy in Barbados Christina Evelyn who um, does all my PR and pretty much organizes my whole life in Barbados um, she um, I said like I want to swim from Barbados to San Lucia and it was amazing within three weeks we kind of planned it which is incredible, such a hard, logistically challenging swim. Bellamy got support from Channel Swim St. Lucia for the expedition, which helped raise needed funds for charities in St. Lucia and Barbados. He was met at the end of the swim by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney and congratulated by officials of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. That's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. 
Students in Education District 1 have been rewarded for the dedication to excellence in their academic lives. Anisia Antoine has that report. Education District 1 collaborated with Parliamentary Representative for Babano, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, to host the 2019 edition of Academic Awards. The ceremony honored students from all schools within the Babano constituency who excelled in the 2019 Common Entrance Examination. Students who scored above 75% received a $200 gift voucher and the top performing student from each school received a laptop. Cyrus Sipal, District 1 Education Officer, congratulated the students on their performance in the 2019 Common Entrance Examination. Every child who would have gone through our walls, leaving grade K and spending seven years at our schools, should be able to leave our school with, with the basic prerequisites of numeracy, literacy, and other life skills that they may need to survive. So I challenge you, and I want to let St. Lucia know that we have to undertake this and see it as a mandate for us. Parliamentary Representative for Babuno, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, commended the Bojis Combined School for achieving second place ranking in the 2019 Common Entrance Examination. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph encouraged the district office, principals and teachers to continue the rewarding work being done with the students in District 1. I believe strongly in the holistic development of an individual, not only academics. And that is why we are working together, and I say we, the district education office and myself, we are working together to see what are the extracurricular activities that we can introduce in, the, in our school system to encourage you all and to make you all more rounded persons and to, of course, to assist you all in accomplishing your goals. The academic award ceremony took place on Wednesday, September 25th at the Babano Multipurpose Center. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. In other success news, St. Lucian author and educator Lovely Sheridan became the recipient of the prestigious Palm Beach Illustrated Educator of the Year Award at the Norton Museum of the Arts in Palm Beach, Florida on September 20, 2019. Sheridan emerged as the final winner through public voting from five finalists of top-notch educators who forge meaningful relationships with their students through innovative techniques and genuine care for the next generation. She has spent five children's books, including Be a Buddy, Not a Bully, which promotes friendliness and inclusivity. Sheridan also created the Buddy Ambassador Program, which she runs in partnership with Mental Health America of Palm Beach County. The program has been a huge success. It has been introduced in four countries in the Caribbean, including St. Lucia. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Frankie, you know I'm traveling to Antigua this afternoon and I forgot my passport at home? Boy, it's a good thing I have my driver's license. I'll still be able to travel. Oh, how can you travel to Antigua without your passport? Under the OECS Freedom of Movement regime, OECS citizens can travel to any of the seven protocol member states without a passport. Once they have an official and valid identification card with their picture and nationality on it. Really? Since when? Since the establishment of the Eastern Caribbean OECS Economic Union, under the revised Treaty of Basté, it entered into force in 2011. So, you mean to tell me that I can leave St. Lucia and go to another OECS country with just my driver's license or national ID and customs and immigration won't stop me? Yes, you can even use your voter's registration card or social security card. As a matter of fact, as a citizen of an OECS Protocol member state, you are entitled to indefinite stay when you travel to another OECS Protocol member state, so you can live and work without a work permit or skilled national certificate. As a construction worker here, I could take my trade to Grenada or any other OECS country? Yes, Frankie, you're straight. And what about my wife and children's schooling? 
Frankie, OECS citizens and their children will be granted equal rights and privileges under the freedom of movement. That includes access to social services, labor market schemes, health and education for your children and your wife. This free movement thing sounds nice. Hassle-free travel to any OECS country, live and work for as long as you like. The OECS Economic Union is the real deal. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Monsieur Ta Janel, Monsieur Madame, du bat marqué une responsabilité pour information. Uh, gouvernement cette lecy GIS. Assemblée puis télévision nationale puis à NTN. Capoceto Nouvelle Creole. Capoceto Primus Hutchinson. À ce nouvel accueil aujourd'hui, nous avons présenté un spécial rapport à son activité pour ouvrir officiellement le mois de héritage créole qui peut être en ville souffrière. Monsieur, Madame, nous en ville souffrière aujourd'hui, quoi activité pour ouvrir le journée créole, héritage créole pour l'année 2019, quoi héritage, activité la sérénale, nous avons une activité qui a été créée de nous là à présent. Tout ça, c'est la culture qui s'est ressentie trop fort. Et bien, Soufouya est venu vivre avec découvert cette liste, découvert Soufouya. Alors, quoi activité, je ne crois pas, en Soufouya aujourd'hui là. C'est ça qui a fait ici. Plusieurs autres activités, votre service, Future Lights, l'université Ball, Vielon, enfin, tout ça, on a créé le projet de Koyol dans le salon. Trouvez quoi ici, et ça a été créé de nous là à présent. C'est mon dieu, je ne crois pas marché. Place Recherche Folklore, FRC, Fondation pour Développement Culturel, CDF, Events, saint Lucia et Fondation Régionale des Soufriers collaborent ensemble pour présenter l'activité de mois héritage créole un plaisir spectacle à souffrir, qui commençait à 4h du matin, ça c'est dimanche matin, et puis on s'est en à la rue Souffrier, côté plusieurs autres activités de suivre ce spectacle. Là. Comme les officiers qui ont expliqué à tout moment, pour ce spectacle-là, même un grand établissement nouveau pour les Rivadez et le chauffeur l'auto passager, ça c'est Old Trafford, directeur exécutif pour Place Recherche Folklore, Louis Victor, explique ce qui ce spectacle-là. Pour l'année ça là, nous avons célébré et découvert cette liste, découvert quoi. Et nous à FRC, place recherche folklore, qui a encouragé cette liste pour découvrir place, il n'y pas jamais allé avant. Pour participer à des bagailles l'autre et pour découvrir un bagaille qui a représenté tout ça où il y a quoi cette liste. Ministre de Culture, honorable Fortuna Belrose, Kouye, pour coopération ensemble, quand c'est le sien. Le gouvernement, c'est un gouvernement qui a mis beaucoup de commitments pour um, Criola et, of course, pour les soins dans un pays. Et aussi, um, travailler. Parce que nous avons travaillé, nous avons travaillé ensemble. Un pays nous a été Nous nous avons ensemble nous avons nous avons nous 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 avons nous Glenda Charles, Haute Fondation Régionale de Soufouye, parlait de Valais Culture à Paris. Soufouye, c'est un côté qui est bien culté. So, nous avons encouragé tout le monde pour descendre Soufouye. Même si vous n'êtes pas venu aujourd'hui, merci pour vous. Merci. Viens venir ici. Venez Soufouye, venez. Où est-ce que ça nous dit pour qu'il y ait plus de faire aussi? Et c'est un bel bouillon. Et nous avons encouragé cette liste pour. Participer à tout ça qui est venu pour Westa, ma héritage croyant. Ok, nous sommes fiches à la poste ici, mais nous sommes fiches. Comment est-ce que vous avez passé ici? Oui, vous avez passé assez bien. Nous commençons depuis 4 heures du matin. Nous avons dit que c'est une heure de souffrir, de nous aller souffler. 
Nous allons entrer en train de souffler la belle bain sous. Belle. Il va y passer bien. Pourquoi ça, c'est tout de nous aller tous découvrir sous couille. Cette balle, tout côté nous donner hérité de ça et de sous couille. Nous faisons ça. Et actuellement, nous ici à Café du programme là. Au plus cher lunch que l'héritage man, c'est il va passer assez bien frère. Jordi, ça va passer bien 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 ici à là. Tout le monde est bon temps, tout le monde va manger, puis va boire. C'est bien là aujourd'hui. Oui, oui, bien c'est bien c'est. Oui, mais tout le monde qui passe ici à Olia. Monsieur, madame, ça c'est comme ça, bah, elle a passé un souffle dimanche pour commencer officiellement le mois héritage créole qui était intéressé à tout bonnement, intéressant, ça veut dire tout bonnement. Je n'ai pas comme une babono qui a trouvé l'occasion pour improuver en ligne des affaires sportives. Dis-moi, grand soeur, mon semaine passée, pour te honorer les étudiants qui peuvent former très bien en l'examination comme un entrance. Représentatif pour Babono, on va Ezekiel Joseph, causé et puis moi, concernant des marches que j'ai faites et qui a continué fait pour assister les jeunesses à ces diverses paroisses à Babono. Selon le représentatif Ezekiel Joseph, le programme a commencé l'année passée, mais il j'ai augmenté et puis participation encore plus jeunesse. Il y a marqué que juste ces jeunes garçons à présent qui ont participé à Netball. Et puis ça m'a intéressé. Um, nous avons ces ce types là qui étaient involvés dans le netball. Donc, so, là, on a dit que les filles qui sont involvées dans le cricket et les filles qui sont involvées dans le football. Là, c'est ce là, Babono, nous avons ces jeunes, ces jeunes, ces types là, involvés dans le netball. Donc, ça m'a voulu, c'est que l'année ça, nous avons expandé. Nous avons fait basketball, nous avons fait volleyball. Et puis, nous avons aussi participé à des sports, des sports là. Nous avons aussi fait um, outside sporting activities called for poultry competition. We want to do poultry competition, right? We want to do effective speaking competition. We want to do quiz competition, because not all of them want to do football, not all of them want to do cricket. We want to do TWC, we want to do these activities. So we want to do as much as possible such a program so that we can get involved. Le représentatif pour Babono, on a besoin que Joseph, plus étudiant à l'école première, à toutes ces paroles, Babono trouver un cadeau et qu'il y a qui peut former plus haut, trouver un laptop. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant. Regardez, je vais avoir une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore. Si Dieu a conservé la vie, nous avons besoin d'une nouvelle à quoi on a besoin. Je vous remercie pour cette chaîne. Merci à Pil Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy and hazy over the northern portion of the region. Elsewhere, it will be fair to partly cloudy skies with a few showers. A relatively dry and stable atmosphere will maintain mostly fair weather conditions across the eastern Caribbean during the next 24 hours. Two tropical waves located over the central tropical Atlantic and just off the West African coast are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 4.40 p.m. and will be low again at 11.02 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was high at 5.47 p.m. and will be low again at 12.29 a.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.53 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.